sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video we talked about cell respiration and photosynthesis and what kind of role they had in an ecosystem. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next stop point which says identify the general equation for aerobic cell respiration and outline this as a summary of a chain of biochemical reactions. There's two parts to this stop point. First we have to identify which just means we have to name the general equation for aerobic cellular respiration. I'll go over that in a second. And then we have to outline this as a summary of a chain of chem biochemical reactions. So we have to say that it's not just one step, well, one reaction, but actually quite a few reactions. And we'll go over that as well. But before we start, if I were to ask you a question like how do we get energy? You might give the basic answer of we get energy from food, right? That is fair enough. We do get energy from food. But if I were to tell you you're only half correct, you might say it's true. We actually get energy indirectly from food because we need to have the sun's energy first to be able to actually absorb, transfer the energy from the sun to the food. So we get it from the sun, which is also true, but it's still only half correct. So we need to have the sun to make sure we actually transfer energy from the sun to food itself. And that usually comes in the form of plants. And we can eat that plant food and get our energy from it, but only indirectly, because there's actually a lot of biochemical reactions that help us get that energy from the food and actually make it into energy we can use. That's what I cover in this video. So there's a couple of different steps we have to go by to make sure we actually get to a place where we can use that energy. First, plants need to use the sun's energy to make food. That was the first step. So it needs to transfer that nuclear energy, so the energy from the sun, into the chemical energy, which is in the form of glucose. And that chemical energy we can then eat and we can help later use to make energy. So we've transferred it from the sun, which we can't use, sun energy we can't use, but we've transferred it into the form of the plants that done that for us, for, into chemical energy, which we then can, can actually eat and use. So that was the first step. The second step is that we have to eat the plant directly. So either we eat the plant or we eat the animal that ate the plant. So either way, the energy always comes from the sun because either we can eat the plant, which gets energy from the sun, or we eat like a cow, for example, and the cow obviously had to eat grass to get that energy it has, and that got it from the sun as well. So either way, we get it directly or indirectly from the sun plants. And then the next step is food has to be broken down. So after we've eaten it, it has to be broken down, and it gets broken down into its, into its components, into smaller components such as glucose, and you're going to get familiar with these words over this whole module and this whole course, amino acids and lipids. So glucose is your carbohydrates, amino acids that makes proteins, and lipids are your fats. And these are the basic, just basic building blocks of a lot of things in our body. Now, we, once we've done that, if this happens at small intestine, we've broken the food into its sort of smaller bits, then we absorb it into a bloodstream. And the next part, so step four, is that nutrients are delivered to our cells. So actually have to be delivered to our cells. And this is where cellular respiration, so the word cellular respiration, which I've written here, obviously the first part of that word is cell. So cellular respiration happens inside cells. So not just anywhere, but inside cells. And this is the process we need to have to make sure we can actually use that energy from glucose. We can't directly use the energy from glucose. We need to convert it into different types of energy. And this happens in something called the mitochondria. And you're going to hear a lot about mitochondria very soon in a couple of chapter's time. But the mitochondria, every cell has that. And this is like, these are the mitochondria I'm, I'm circling right now. And what the mitochondria are, they're a bit like your power plant. So I'm going to write power plant. You can imagine like a coal power plant. They make us, they help us make electricity out of coal. The mitochondria helps us make energy out of glucose. But the same idea is like a power plant, it just makes energy. And inside this, inside this mitochondria, we have something called anaerobic cell respiration. Aerobic, sorry, aerobic cell respiration. I'm going to go over what that is as well, but aerobic aerobic just means oxygen. So we need to have oxygen present for this to happen. And this is what this actual dot point, first dot point, part of the dot point says, identify the general equation for aerobic cellular respiration. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to talk about the actual equation for aerobic, which means we need oxygen, aerobic cellular respiration. So first, then we've got that glucose, which we originally got from our food. We've broken it down into small intestine absorbed into the bloodstream, and now it's in our cells. So this glucose comes into our cells. This plus oxygen, which is why it's called aerobic cellular respiration, produces carbon dioxide. Remember, this was just the 
so waste product we produce it by as a side product and it then gets used again by the plants to make photosynthesis happen but this these two are products and then they react this is the reaction and then carbon dioxide water and energy gets produced so this is the energy this is why we did that in the first place to get that energy which we need to be able to move maintain and, and repair ourselves etc etc this was the word equation and then the chemical equation which is one you also need to know. Glucose, the structure of glucose is C6H12O6 for oxygen. It's O2, but we need to have six molecules of O2, so six O2s. We need to have carbon dioxide, or we produce carbon dioxide, and we don't, need, don't only produce one carbon dioxide, we produce six carbon dioxide. And we produce H2O as water, and we produce six moles of H2O, six molecules of H2O. And then energy, so ATP. And this, again, was our energy. We call it ATP. And you can imagine ATP to be a bit like money. Like if you have money, you can buy stuff with the money. And then ATP, we can use the ATP to make stuff happen. So ATP is a bit like money. But this is the reason why we did all of this. And now here, this looks like it's like one chemical reaction. But the actual dot point says, outline this as a summary of chemical reactions. So this here happens over many steps. Not just one step, but many steps. And what I'm going to show you now, you don't have to memorize, but you just have to understand that it doesn't happen in just one step. So here we have that glucose that we said earlier that we have when it goes into cells. This is the mitochondria, so the part that I highlighted earlier. And glucose gets broken down in something called a pyruvate. And when this happens, there is some ATP released. And to be precise, overall a net ATP gain of two ATPs. And this happens actually outside of the mitochondria. But in this pyruvate, goes into the cell or into the mitochondria and then there's a couple of steps. You don't have to rem remember these names, just know that there's a couple of steps that make more, a more ATP. So we've got the Krebs cycle, we've got the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation and all of those processes together make a total of 36 ATP. And where do we need oxygen? We actually need our oxygen, so the stuff that says glucose plus oxygen and our oxygen is required right here here. And if we have no oxygen, so without oxygen we would not be able to do this step. This step does only works with oxygen. So this is the same thing just now. I'm going to show you in a brief form. So this is the the biochemical reactions. That is just not just one, but biochemical means that it's in bio, so in bio means as in living things, and there's chemical reactions that happen in the biological processes in the body itself. So this is the summary of the biological processes that it risk make us our energy. So first, glucose, we said glucose here, goes into pyruvate, and that releases a total of two ATP. Now this does not require oxygen. We can do this without oxygen. But the next step, if we do aerobic respiration, and remember, aerobic means oxygen. If we do aerobic respiration, which is these steps here in the mitochondria, they actually help us produce another 36 ATP on top of that. 36 ATP. So we get a total of 38 ATP if we do aerobic cell respiration. So if we use oxygen, we get lots of energy. Whereas if we use anaerobic, so we have no oxygen present. So anaerobic is the opposite of aerobic. Anaerobic means no oxygen. Aerobic means oxygen and N means no. So no oxygen present. We don't make any more ATP. So we get that two ATP from the original glucose to pyruvate, but then nothing on top of that. But we can sometimes we have to do that, so, but um, many bacteria actually do a lot of it. And for example, when we make alcohol, that's when we ferment glucose and we produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. And in our body, when we have no oxygen, we make lactic acid, which is why when you run a lot and you feel really fatigued, it's actually lactic acid because you have no more oxygen, not enough oxygen, you produce lactic acid and that makes you fatigued. Right? So what was, I'll uh, cover the dot point again, identify the general equation for aerobic cell respiration. This was the general equation. We've got glucose plus oxygen going into carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. That was our word equation. And the one below is our chemical equation, C6H12O6, which was glucose, plus six moles of oxygen going into six moles of carbon dioxide plus six moles of water, H2O, plus 38 ATP, because we said 2 from glucose to pyruvate, and then 36 on top of that for making aerobic respiration happen. So 38 in total. And then the other part was 
summarize it, outline, so give the basic steps involved when it comes to converting glucose into ATP through aerobic cell respiration. So we say glucose pyruvate was the first step that happens here in the cytosol. That gives you two ATP. And then we have these other steps, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. We produce another 36 ATP on top of that. That was for aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration doesn't produce 36 more. It only produces two. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.